welcome folks. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about spark plugs and uh, how to set the gap between the electrodes. Okay, what you see in front of you here is uh, your typical spark plug domestic vehicle, probably out of a, a Chevy V8 or a, a V6. Um, these two styles of uh, gapping pins or rounds, if you will, is actually the, the best way to um, to check the gap setting in uh, the conventional style spark plug. Basically it's a, it's a pin shaped affair, it's round and it's the best way to actually get the, uh, the most accurate measurement inside that gap there. What you're trying to do is, is uh, the manufacturer for each given vehicle and engine combination will tell you what the, uh, the right spark plug for that particular engine is as well as the correct gap setting. Uh, you got to get that gap setting uh, you know, to factory specs if you want your engine to perform uh, at its best. Uh, it affects idling, uh, cruising and uh, high speed running. So these, these are the ones I used to use here. They're a pin style and they have uh, markings in thousandths of an inch. Uh, some of the, you that will be working with imports or maybe even in Canada because we went metric about seven, 1977 We'll be dealing with something with millimeters on it, but these are the old school ones. Um, I came up with this one. Believe it or not, it was on the counter of a, a hardware store or automotive store. I forget which. But what it is, it's a it's a taper. It's got a tape around the circumference of it here. It gets thicker as you turn it. And on there, there's markings in uh, thousandths of an inch. So all you do is you spin this inside the gap of the spark plug. So you start at the small part of that tapered, it's like a, a ramp if you will, and then you just slowly turn it using no force just until it starts to, to stop there and then you can take a reading. This one's set for about 45 thousandths of an inch. This is fairly typical of a General Motors uh, carbureted uh, engine. And uh, this is the one I currently use. I'm not too particular. Like a lot of people say, well, you got to use the pin kind because it's more accurate and stuff. Well, I've been using this one here for years. It's quick. You don't have to go looking. Uh, have to go looking for the right one. Actually, this one and this other one here won't even go up as high as what this plug requires, 45 thousandths of an inch. Uh, remember, each spark plug has got a different gap, and you have to find the equivalent for a, a measuring tool. Um, while I'm on the subject, this was uh, this was the way they used to gap tools. Maybe they still do. It's a little tool on the end of this particular uh, gap measuring tool. It's all in one. And what they wanted you to do to change the gap, like this outer electrode or ground strap, has to be bent either way. You don't want to overdo it. Just a little bit at a time because you'll fatigue this. And if it gets too weak, it could break off inside your engine and cause major catastrophe damage equals expense. Okay, so what they wanted you to do was to hook this in the most appropriate slot on the ground ground strap, outer electrode, and bend it. But what I found was half the time I end up touching the inner porcelain that surrounds the inner electrode and possibly the inner electrode itself. And uh, you don't want to be touching that in any way, shape, or form. So what I've come up with to do my adjustment is very simple. It's just a a pair of pliers, a slip joint tight, and if you uh, want to do my method, I'll show you how. Uh, in here, on the end of the, on the end, and also on the other side, there's serrations here which will help you grab anything that you're you're trying to bite on uh, with this tool. It's very simple. Uh, that's the one I would recommend to go with is something that's got something that'll grab, not just flat and shiny, it'll just slip on you. And uh, that's to open open the gap on the electrode if it isn't correct. A lot of times people will just get them right out of the package when they're brand new and throw them in the engine, should I say install in the engine, and uh, they just, uh, they, they could be set for a particular uh, engine in, in the coverage of that particular spark plug uh, model and it might not be the correct one for your engine, so always check that gap. It might even got bent up in uh, shipping. So always check it no matter what before you install it in your engine. Check for any defects, any anything that looks suspicious. Sometimes on the end when these threads start in, uh, on the very end of it, they can be uh, a little bit uh, 
oh, they're mass produced, so they, they might not be perfect. You take a look at that, especially if you're installing an aluminum head, they can they can actually start cutting shavings out of your head. So always take a good close look at the thing everywhere to make sure that uh, it didn't uh, get through their mass production um, and on to you with some damage. Okay, to open that gap there, what I do is I just basically put the pliers on there and then just very gently pull back on it. But you don't want to do it too much. Like I say, less is better. So don't grab a handful there and really yank on it. Otherwise, you'll just end up fatiguing this uh, outer ground strap or electrode and breaking it off. Just a little bit at a time, just open it up. And if you go a little bit too far, like you say, like I say rather, um, get in here with the gauge, measure it. Oh geez, now I'm too big, I'm up to about 50 or 55 thousandths of an inch. I'm aiming for 45 thousandths of an inch. So what I do then, same tool, pick a flat spot on there, and by tapping on there, just the right amount, start small, actually practice on an older spark plug, one that you're not going to use again. Get the feel for this thing, I've been doing it for years, so it's no problem for me. So the only thing you're going to be tapping is this outer electrode and nothing else. So you just keep tapping it, increase the force of the tap if you're not getting it to move. And uh, same thing after you finish tapping it in and, and having a look at it. Put your gauge back in there. And uh, then again, if you're too small, you can go back to opening up just ever so slightly by pulling here. The trick is, when I use this, I'm either pulling or banging on the outer electrode only never on any other part of the spark plug, especially you start hitting the porcelain, you're going to get it chipping on you. You don't want that. So that's my method, and uh, I found it worked the best for me. However, if you find some fancy gadget or tool, and you happen to have one or want to buy one, you can go that route as well, but this way I can stay away from every other part of the spark plug, if you're careful that is. So that's the way I gap spark plugs. Just remember, always get the correct one for your engine. Try not to accept what the parts man, he might uh, give you a substitute uh, number or brand. If you can, try to get the original factory one. It might be a few more bucks or whatever, but it's, it's uh, well worth it. Uh, you're not gambling at that point. Okay, there's gapping for today. A uh, little uh, of my uh, experience over the years, that's what I've come up with. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Have yourself a, a great day and... Uh, Bye for now.